Okay, so now we've hooked up our application to Firebase and Firestore. So we can start interacting with the database. Now, I made just one slight typo in the last video, and that's this thing right here where we say db.settings timestamp in snapshots. It's actually timestamps in snapshot, plural, okay? So save that now. And now before we start interacting with this database, which we will do in a minute, I wanna show you one package I have installed for VS Code, which is gonna help me. And that is called Live Server. So what this enables me to do is right click on any HTML file and go to open with Live Server. So if I do that, it's gonna open up a Live Server with this page in the browser, okay? So this is what our website looks like at the minute, thanks to that styles.css. All right then, so now we want to start interacting with this database. So remember, we stored our database right here in this variable. So whenever we want to start interacting with the database, we use this constant, right? We say db dot something. So let's do that inside app.js. But what exactly do I want to do? Well, what I'd like to do is actually go out and grab the data that we have stored inside our Cafe's collection. So first of all, I need to get a reference to the Cafe's collection. So to do that, we can say db dot collection and then inside brackets because this is a method we say which collection we want to grab and we want the cafe's collection so that is going to get us a reference to this cafe's collection right here then what we want to do is get all of the documents inside it so to do that we use a method called get we say dot get like so now that is going to go out and grab all of those documents from this cafe's collection and return them to us but this right here, this is an asynchronous request. And by that, I mean it takes some time to complete. It might take half second less or more, meaning that we can't just store this in a variable. We can't say something like var cafes is equal to this and then use cafes underneath because cafes might not have populated yet. This is asynchronous. It takes some time to do. So what it does for us instead is return to us a promise. And that promise basically says, look, at some point, this method is going to complete. It's going to grab that data. If we tack on a dot then method, then what will happen is when this action is complete and we retrieve the data, this method fires, right? The dot then method fires and it takes back a callback function. And this is the function which will execute when this action is complete right here. Okay, so we can wait until that's done and then fire a function when we have that data. Now, Inside here, we'll pass through that callback function, which is going to be an ES6 arrow function. And inside, we can pass through a parameter, which will be a snapshot of the database. This is what we receive back when we call this method. We're receiving a snapshot back of the database at that moment in time. And a snapshot is just basically a representation of the different data inside the collection. So we can access all of the different documents from that snapshot inside this collection by saying snapshot.docs. And I can demonstrate that. We'll say console.log snapshot.docs. All right then, so let's view this in a browser. And we'll go over here and inspect the element. And inside the console, we can see now this array right here. So if we expand, we can see at the minute, it just has one element and it's right here. And that's because we only have one element inside our document, uh, our collection right here. Let's add another one. So we'll leave the ID so it auto generates. Then the name over here is going to be something like toads, toadstool. And again, this is going to be inside Mario Land. So let's say Mario Land right there. Save that. And now we have two documents. So now when we refresh over here, I'll clear that, refresh. Now we should get two back here and we can see these two different elements, okay? But we can't actually see the data from this document. Where is it? Well, to get the data from a document, we have to use a method. So what we'll do first of all is cycle through the different documents that we have here and then we'll try to retrieve the actual data stored in each document. So to do that, what I'll say is snapshot dot docs to get those docs and then say dot for each, which is a method allowing us to cycle through each of those documents, each of those items in the array. So each time around, we get the document inside the callback function. 
and inside the function we can just say something like console.log and we'll say doc first of all. So again we're just logging the actual document here so if we save then we get an error because console is not a method or an object. Okay so let's save that and now we can see these two objects right here but they still look the same as before. We're not getting the actual data here. We're not finding out the name or the city of these documents, just a load of other stuff that Firebase adds for us. So to get the data stored inside each document, we say dot data, and that is a method. So now if I say this, then we should see the data from each document right here, the city and the name. That is awesome. So that's how simple it is to go out, grab the data from Firestore, and then retrieve it. Okay, so we're cycling through each document in the snapshot, and we're getting the data from each document. Now then, we don't just want to log this to the console. What we want to do is really output this to the browser, right, in this section right here. So let us first of all get a reference in our document to this section. Remember, inside our HTML file, this right here, this form tag, sorry, not this form tag, this UL is where we want to output our different cafes, right? So we need to grab this element, a reference to this, from our app.js. So let's do that at the top. I'm just going to enter down a couple of lines and say const cafe list is equal to documents dot query selector if I can spell it correctly and then the ID is going to be cafe hyphen list. That's the ID of that UL. Okay so we have a reference to that now. Now we want to get this data each document and we want to render it to this thing right here. Now, I could do all of that code inside here, but what I'd like to do is put this in a separate function so that we can use it again later on and not just inside this callback function right here, okay? So let's create a comment first of all saying create elements and render cafe. So we're gonna create some HTML elements, put the data inside those and then render them to the DOM. Okay, so function, and this is gonna be called render cafe and it's going to take in a doc, so the document that we want to render. Now then, what we want to do is call that function down here, so we can say render cafe and pass in the doc. Make sense? Because now what we're doing is cycling through each document on the snapshot, and we're calling this function and passing in the individual document each time around so that we can render it to the DOM. So every document that we have right here is going to call that function for each one and render that to the DOM. So how are we going to do this exactly? Well, first of all, we're going to create some variables. I'll say let li equal to document.createElement. And this is going to be an li tag. So this li tag is going to be sitting inside eventually this UL. We're going to render it there. Now, inside the li, we want a name and also a city. So I'll store each of those in a span tag. So we'll say let name equal document.createElement again. And this is going to be a span tag. And then we also want one for the city. So let's sit equal document.create elements. And this is also going to be a span tag. So the name and the city are both going to be inside span tags inside this li. Make sense? Cool. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is set an attribute to this li tag. And that attribute is going to be the document ID. Remember, this thing right here, this ID, which is auto-generated, what I want to do is attach that to some kind of data attribute to each li tag that we output, so that if we need to do something with it in the future, then what we can do is identify that document from the front end, from the li tag. So I'm gonna say down here, li.set attribute, and by the way, if you're struggling with all of this DOM manipulation stuff, I do have a series on JavaScript and the DOM. That link is going to be down below if you want to refresh it. So we're going to set an attribute and the attribute name is going to be data hyphen ID. And then the attribute value is going to be the doc dot ID. So the document we receive here, remember, we retrieve that right here. And then the ID property on that document gets us this unique ID right here. We don't have to say dot data function then dot id because this property it's not stored in the data here it's stored at the top of the document that's its id property okay so now we're setting that attribute 
The next thing I want to do is set the text content of each of these span tags right here. So we'll say name dot text content is going to be equal to doc, which we receive right here, dot data dot name. That is the property name that we have right here. OK, so we want to do the same thing for the city. So we'll say city dot text content. And that's going to be equal to the doc dot data dot city. All right, so we've populated the text in those different things. The next thing we want to do is append both of these to the li and then append the li to the document. So down here we'll say li dot append child and we want to append the name first of all, which is this thing, this element. Then we want to do the same thing for the city. So li dot append child and this time the city and then finally we just need to append the li to the cafe list right here which is the ul so we'll say cafe list dot append child and then finally the li tag inside it whoo okay so i think that is all done now so we're getting the data from this collection we're getting a snapshot of that collection getting all the docs off it cycling through each one using for each for each document we're calling this function render cafe and passing the document in as a parameter for each document therefore we're creating a new li tag two span tags for the name and city then we're setting the attribute of the li tag to the id of the document then we're setting the text content of the name and city appending those to the li tag and then appending the li tag to the cafe list OK, so let's cross our fingers now and hope that this works. So if we go to over here and refresh, then we saw those blink in. But now we can see those toads, toadstool and where it is, the location and Mario's mocker as well. Awesome. So that, my friends, right here is how we get data from Firebase. DB dot collection, then the collection name dot get. Then we use the then method to fire a function to do something with that snapshot that we receive back.